plus plus three. Section one. Rob, good morning. Stretton Festival box office. How can I help you? Melanie, oh, hello. My family and I are on holiday in the area, and we've seen some posters about the festival this week. Could you tell me about some of the events, please? Rob, of course. Melanie, first of all, are there still tickets available for the jazz band on Saturday? Rob, there are, but only ill. The £12 seats have all been sold. Example Melanie, okay. And the venue is the school, isn't it? Rob, yes, that's right, the secondary school. Make sure you don't go to the primary school, 01 by mistake. And there's an additional performer who isn't mentioned on the posters, Carolyn Hart is going to play with the band. Melanie, oh, I think I've heard her on the radio. Doesn't she play the oboe, or flute, or something? Rob, yes the flute. She usually plays with symphony orchestras, and apparently this is zero to her first time with a jazz band. Melanie, well, I'd certainly like to hear her. Then the next thing I want to ask about is the duck. Races, I saw a poster beside a river. What are they, exactly? Rob, well, you buy a yellow plastic duck, or as many as you like, they're a pound each. And you write your name on each one. There'll be several races, depending on the number of ducks taking part. And John Stevens, a champion swimmer who lives locally, is going to start the races. All the ducks will be launched into the Raya at the 03 back of the cinema, then they'll float along the river for 500 meters, as far as the railway bridge. Melanie, and are there any prizes? 118. Test 4. Rob, yes, the first duck in each race to arrive at the finishing line wins its own a free 04 tickets for the concert on the last night of the festival. Melanie, you said you can buy a duck. I'm sure my children will both want one. Rob, they are on sale at a stall in the market. You can't miss it, it's got an enormous sign 05 showing a couple of ducks. Melanie, okay. I'll go there this afternoon. I remember walking past there yesterday. Now could you tell me something about the flower show, please? Rob, well, admission is free, and the show is being held in Bithwaite Hall. 06 Melanie, sorry, how do you spell that? Rob, B-Y-T-H-W-A-1-T-E, Bithwaite. Melanie, is it easy to find? I'm not very familiar with the town yet. Rob, oh, you won't have any problem. It's right in the center of Stretton. It's the only old building in the town, so it's easy to recognize. Melanie, I know it. I presume it's open all day. Rob, yes, but if you'd like to see the prizes being awarded for the best flowers, you'll need to be there at 5 o'clock. The prizes are being given by a famous actor, Kevin 07 Chaplis. He lives nearby and gets involved in a lot of community events. Melanie, gosh, I've seen him on TV. I'll definitely go to the prize giving. Rob, right. Melanie, I've seen a list of plays that are being performed this week, and I'd like to know which are suitable for my children, and which ones my husband and I might go to. Rob, how old are your children? Melanie, five and seven. What about The Mystery of Muldoon? Rob, that's aimed at five to ten-year-olds. QB Melanie, so if I take my children, I can expect them to enjoy it more than I do. Rob, I think so. If you'd like something for yourself and your husband and leave your 09 children with a babysitter you might like to see, Fire and Flood, it's about events that really happened in Stratton 200 years ago, and children might find it rather frightening. Melanie, oh, thanks for the warning. And finally, what about Silly Sailor? Rob, that's a comedy, and it's for young and old. In fact, it won an award in the Stratton 010 Drama Festival a couple of months ago. Melanie, okay. Well, goodbye, and thanks for all the information. I'm looking forward to the festival. Rob, goodbye times. Section 2. 
Good morning and welcome to the museum, one with a remarkable range of exhibits which I'm sure you'll enjoy. My name's Greg and I'll tell you about the various collections as we go round. But before we go, let me just give you a taste of what we have here. Well, for one thing, we have a fine collection of 20th and 21st century paintings, many by very well-known artists. I'm sure you'll recognize several of the paintings. This is the 011 gallery that attracts the largest number of visitors, so it's best to go in early in the day, before the crowds arrive. Then there are the 19th century paintings. The museum was opened in the middle of that century, and several of the artists each donated one work, to get the museum started, 012 as it were. So they are of special interest to us, we feel closer to them than to other works. 119 Audio scripts. The sculpture gallery has a number of fine exhibits, but I'm afraid it's currently closed for refurbishment. You'll need to come back next year to see it properly, but a number of the 013 sculptures have been moved to other parts of the museum. Around the World is a temporary exhibition, you've probably seen something about it on TV 014 or in the newspapers. It's created a great deal of interest because it presents objects from every continent and many countries, and provides information about their social context, why they were made, who for, and so on. Then there's the collection of coins. This is what you might call a focused, specialist collection, because all the coins come from this country, and were produced between 2000 and 1000 years ago. And many of them were discovered by ordinary people 015 digging their gardens and donated to the museum. All our porcelain and glass was left to the museum by its founder, when he died in 1878. And 016 in the terms of his will, we're not allowed to add anything to that collection, he believed it was perfect in itself. And we don't see any reason to disagree. Okay, that was something about the collections, and now here's some more practical information, in case you need it. Most of the museum facilities are downstairs in the basement, so you go down the stairs here. When you reach the bottom of the stairs, you'll find yourself in a sitting area with comfortable chairs and sofas where you can have a rest before continuing your exploration of the museum. We have a very good restaurant which serves excellent food all day, in a relaxing atmosphere. To reach it when you get to the bottom of the stairs go straight ahead to the far 017 side of the sitting area, then come right into the corridor. You'll see the door of the restaurant facing you. If you just want a snack, or if you'd like to eat somewhere with facilities for children, we also have a cafe. When you reach the bottom of the stairs, you'll need to go straight ahead turn 01B right into the corridor, and the cafe is immediately on the right. And talking about children, there are baby changing facilities downstairs times cross the sitting 019 area continues straight ahead along the corridor on the left, and you and your baby will find the facilities on the left-hand side. The cloakroom, where you should leave coats, umbrellas and any large bags is on the left 020 hand side of the time sitting area, it's through the last door before you come to the corridor. There are toilets on every floor, but in the basement they're the first rooms on the left when you get down there. Okay, now if you've got anything to leave in the cloakroom, please do that now and then we'll start our tour. Section 3 Supervisor Joanna 120 Hi, Joanna, good to meet you. Now, before we discuss your new research project, I'd like to hear something about the psychology study you did last year for your master's degree. So how did you choose your subjects for that? Well, I had six subjects, all professional musicians, and all female. Three were violinists and there was also a cello player and a pianist and a flute player. They were all very highly regarded in the music world and they'd done quite extensive 0, 21 and 22 tours in different continents, and quite a few had won prizes and competitions as well. Test 4 Supervisor, and they were quite young weren't they? Joanna, yes, between 25 and 29, the mean was 
I wasn't specifically looking for 0, 21 and 22 artists who produce recordings. But THJSJS something that's just taken for granted these days and they all had. Supervisor, right? Now you collected your data through telephone interviews, didn't you? Joanna, yes. One realized if I was going to Jane to view leading music gens it'd only be possible 0, 23 and 24 over the phone because they are so busy. I recorded them using a telephone recording adapter. I'd been worried about the quality, but it worked out all right. I managed at least a 30-minute interview with each subject, sometimes longer. Supervisor, did doing it on the phone make it more stressful? Joanna, I thought it might. It was all quite informal though and in fact they seemed very keen to talk. And I don't think using the phone meant I got less rich data 0, 23 and 24 rather the opposite in fact. Supervisor, interesting. And you were looking at how performers dress for concert performances? Joanna, that's right my research investigated the way players see their role as a musician and how this is linked to the type of clothing they decide to wear. But that focus didn't emerge immediately. When I started I was more interested in 0, 25 and 26 trying to investigate the impact of what was worn on those L esteeming, and also whether someone like a violinist might adopt a different style of clothing from 0, 25 and 26 say. Someone plaging the flute or the trumpet. Supervisor, it's interesting that the choice of dress is up to the individual, isn't it? Joanna, yes, you'd expect there to be rules about it in orchestras, but that's quite rare. Super v one sor you only had WQTTN performers in your study. Was that because male musicians are less worried about fashion? Joanna, I think a lot of the men are very much influenced by fashion, but JN social terms 027 the choices they have are more limited, they'd really upset audiences if they strayed away from quite narrow boundaries. Supervisor, hum. Now, popular music has quite different expectations. Did you read Mike Frost's article about the dress of women performers in popular music? Joanna, no. Supervisor, he points out that a lot of female singers and musicians in popular music tend to dress down in performances and wear less feminine clothes, like jeans instead of skirts, and he suggests this is because otherwise they'd just be discounted as 028 trivial. Joanna, but you could argue they are just wearing what's practical. I mean, a pop music concert is usually a pretty energetic affair. Super V1SOR, yes, he doesn't make that point, but I think you're probably right. I was interested by the effect of the audience at a musical performance when it came to the choice of dress. Joanna, the subjects I interviewed felt this was really important. It's all to do with what we understand by performance as a public event. They believed the audience 029 had certain expectations and it was up to them as performers to fulfill these expectations. To show a kind of esteem. Supervisor, they weren't afraid of looking as if they'd made an effort to look good. Joanna, um. I think in the past the audience would have had those expectations of one another too, but that's not really the case now, not in the UK anyway. Supervisor, no. Joanna, and I also got interested in what sports scientists are doing too, with regard to clothing. 121. Audio scripts. Supervisor, musicians are quite vulnerable physically, aren't they? Because the movements they carry out are very intensive and repetitive, so I'd imagine some features 030 of sports clothing could safeguard the players from the potentially dangerous effects of this sort of thing. Joanna, yes, but musicians don't really consider it. They avoid clothing that obviously restricts their movements, but that's as far as they go. Super v one sor anyway, coming back to your own research, do you have any idea where you're going from here? Joanna, I was thinking of doing a study using an audience, including. Section 4 As we saw in the last lecture, a major cause of climate change is the rapid rise in the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere over the last century. If we could reduce the amount of C02, perhaps the rate of climate change could also be slowed down. One potential method involves enhancing the role of the soil that plants grow in, 
with regard to absorbing C02. Ratan Lal, a soil scientist from Ohio State University in the USA, claims that the world's agricultural soils could potentially absorb 13% of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The equivalent of the amount released in the last 30 years. And research is going on into how this might be achieved. Lau first came to the idea that soil might be valuable in this way not through an interest in climate change, but rather out of concern for the land itself and the people dependent on it. Carbon-rich soil is dark, crumbly and fertile, and retains some water. But erosion can occur 0.31 if soil is dry, which is a likely effect if it contains inadequate amounts of carbon. Erosion is of course bad for people trying to grow crops or breed animals on that terrain. In the 1970s and times AOs, Lau was studying soils in Africa so devoid of organic matter that the ground had 032 become extremely hard, like cement. There he met a pioneer in the study of global warming, who suggested that carbon from the soil had moved into the atmosphere. This is now looking increasingly likely. Let me explain. For millions of years, carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere have been regulated, in part, by a natural partnership between plants and microbes, tiny organisms in the soil. Plants absorb C02 from the air and transform it into sugars and other carbon-based 033 substances. While a proportion of these carbon products remain in the plant, some transfer 034 from the roots to fungi and soil microbes, which store the carbon in the soil. The invention of agriculture some 10,000 years ago disrupted these ancient soil building processes and led to the loss of carbon from the soil. When humans started draining the natural topsoil and plowing it up for planting, they exposed the buried carbon to oxygen. This created carbon dioxide and released it into the air. And in some places, grazing by domesticated animals has removed all vegetation, releasing carbon into the air. Tons of carbon have been stripped from the world's soils, where it's needed, and pumped into the atmosphere. So what can be done? Researchers are now coming up with evidence that even modest changes to farming can significantly help to reduce the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. Some growers have already started using an approach known as regenerative agriculture. This aims to boost the fertility of SWA and keep it moist through established practices. D035 include keeping fields planted all year round and increasing the variety of plants being 036 grown. Strategies like these can significantly increase the amount of carbon stored in the soil, so agricultural researchers are now building a case for their use in combating climate change. 122. Test 4. One American investigation into the potential for storing C02 on agricultural lands is taking place in California. Soil scientist Wendy Silver of the University of California, Berkeley, is conducting a first-of-its-kind study on a large cattle farm in the state. She and her students 037 are testing the effects on carbon storage of the compost that is created from waste, both agricultural, including manure and cornstalks. And waste produced JN gardens, such as 038 leaves, branches, and lawn trimmings. In Australia, soil ecologist Christine Jones is testing another promising soil enrichment strategy. Jones and 12 farmers are working to build up soil carbon by cultiatjung grasses 039 that stay green all year round. Like composting, the approach has already been proved experimentally. Jones now hopes to show that it can be applied on working farms and that the resulting carbon capture can be accurately measured. It's hoped in the future that projects such as these will demonstrate the role that farmers and other land managers can play in reducing the harmful effects of greenhouse gases. For example, in countries like the United States, where most farming operations use large applications of fertilizer, changing such long-standing habits will require a change of system. Ratan Lau argues that farmers should receive payment not just for the corn or beef they 040 produce but also for the carbon they can store in their soil. Another study being carried out. FF 